Time. Well, let's find out. It's time. Picks and bans for game number two. SKT versus CJ. There's that Shivana ban against Shy right off the bat. Do you ban the Hecarim, though, as well? Because you start to dig yourself in a bit of a hole right here where maybe you first pick the Hecarim, but if you give the Hecarim up, Shy will happily take that in the wow. first round of the draft. Azir. An Azir ban against Coco. I mean, again, Coco did play really well, and they are kind of eliminating things that make the Hecarim hard to play, so maybe they are planning on first picking it. I don't know. I'd be surprised. I but. don't think. I mean, Coco played pretty well, but I don't know if that's ban, if that's exactly ban worthy. You have to yeah. be concerned about the Urgot. There's a possibility that Callista and Urgot are both left up in this game, in which case, where do you go? Now it's the LeBlanc ban. You can't give it to Faker. It seems like this is your ban. It's just kind of a, we didn't plan on playing against this sort of thing. We just don't want to deal with it kind of ban, you know? Yeah, they dealt with it well when the GE Tigers played it in back to back games. Kuro in their last match of the season and SK Telecom was able to win both of those. So I'm not know. sure I'm not sure about that about that ban in particular here. The decision has come down from Coma. I would ban the Azir. I would ban Urgot. They're gonna ban Callista. Okay, so they don't want to first pick it. They want to first pick Hecarim or Urgot most likely. And they're going to get one of them. That's a tough choice, too, between those two. I take Urgot. Urgot handles the Hecarim, whereas Hecarim cannot necessarily handle the Urgot. Yeah. So I see your point there. Also, just in terms of what we saw Space do with that Urgot last game, it's yes. extremely dangerous. And Lulu it's going to be Lulu. So both they're leaving both of them up so that they get one. Yeah. But I, th I do think you take Urgot here. CJ first picked Urgot in the last game. We'll see that same. Or they could take the Hecarim. Man, that would be okay. That would be bold, considering how well Space saved his ultimates. And I don't know if I'd give them both to CJ. That <laughs> no, would that, be... They're not. They're not going to first pick. Now. That's, that's obviously not something Shy even plays. So. Well, I don't know if first picking Kennen would be the greatest idea either. Well, what do you do? Right. Uh, take the Urgot. That's I think what you, you do. I think you take the Urgot. I agree with you, Dylan. But. Yeah. Without, with the Callista already banned, you don't have to worry about giving CJ the Callista Kennen combo. Exactly, which would make this Kennen first pick even more puzzling, wouldn't it? Uh oh. Well, looks like they might decide to go through with it anyway. But this is going to give uh, Hecker a. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, all right, there we go. I would be. I was about to be very I would, shocked. I would be very angry if there was a Kennen first pick in this game. You won't like Monty when he's angry. I'm very, very angry and confused. The secret is that he's always angry. <laughs> there we go. Just like in the Avengers, it's true. So, Nunu. Huh. Ambition still hasn't lost with Nunu after that last game. Yeah. Has a chance to stretch his unbeaten streak even to seven games. If he no. wins this one and picks the champion one more time. Nunu is very understandable, but yeah, that Hecarim, I think is definitely going to be the pickup for, for uh, CJ. Well, maybe Nautilus. Huh. Even has though Thresh has not banned this game, looks like CJ yeah. has that priority on Nautilus all the same. And we see they will go ahead and lock that in. Yep. Nautilus locked in for Mad Life, I would imagine. It's and interesting because Wolf really hasn't been playing a lot of Nautilus. That's uh, that that hasn't been a priority for SK Telecom. But so you're you not showing a whole lot with the Nautilus either. So do you take the Nunu away? Looks like they will. I think you have to. I think you really want to make sure that you get the Nunu and that ambition has to go onto something that he at least has lost games with. Now, I would imagine that uh, that uh, CJ is going to try to save this mid-pick for last, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially up against Faker. Yeah. Sivir falling a little bit further down the draft this time. And it looks like we may just be reversing compositions here <laughs> to a certain extent. If we have Sivir for Hecarim on CJ and well, we've Urgot got the Nunu on SK Telecom and Gragas as well. You know, and I'm really not too concerned about Ambitions Gragas at all with the way that he played that against Jyn Air. He looked so good that I think, you know, Gragas Nunu for Ambition right now are very interchangeable. Yeah, he, I think he did well on both of them and certainly yeah. a better Gragas performer than Tom. But Tom has had good Nunu games, so Nunu Sejuani may be more of Tom's style than this Gragas. So, yeah, this would be 
pretty much exact exact opposite compositions, except there's probably going to be a different mid laner from CJ. Nar instead of Siobhan up in the top lane. Well, Soraka would certainly be interesting. Yeah, a lot of support players here in Korea do talk about liking Soraka. Uh, Gorilla probably the foremost, but... I think Wolf's going to play Alistair. Uh, SK Telecom has played Urgot Alistair lanes in the past. Yep. And we could see the Anivia Faker went for that early on in 5.5 and he just did. doing tier. So Seraph's Embrace and Rod of Ages going for an ultra scaling, very slow damage composition. I really hope it's not a Zareth. Well, I mean, look at the engage from CJ. Like, Zareth is just not going to survive. And Faker is a great Zareth player, but we saw GBM not even be able to handle it. And he's oh going to try it anyway. Boy, okay. I really don't like this. You know, uh, early on this season, we saw a lot of uh, Faker getting picked into an unfavorable Zareth, and it ended uh, very badly for SKT I just, multiple times. I just see Ziggs as a better option than Zareth right now. He's not immobile. Both are trying to hit the back line with their ults, but oh. the Ziggs is not. You can, with the buffs to Athenes especially, you're not going to run out of that mana. You can do a ton of damage into a team fight. You can burst harder because he doesn't have to sit there. And blind picking the Zareth may be pretty dangerous. And if we have to go for champions that have strong poke, I even think that this AP Kogma is better right now. Of course, we've seen that in NA and in Europe. We have not seen it here in a long time in Korea, certainly not since Luton's Echo was introduced. You know, after how well Ziggs went for CJ last week, I'm actually really surprised that we're not seeing it on either side in the first two games. I, I like both Cog and Ziggs better, but in fact, Coco's going for the Vlad. Okay, well, again, just more engaged. Like, what is this Zareth supposed to do here? Still, they're basically, CJ's basically running SKT's composition from last game, except, yep. <laughs> except they, have, uh, they have an engaged support instead. Yeah, so they have the, the Janna instead, but even so, maybe difficult to get onto SK Telecom with all the zoning and crowd control and the big, big front line that SKT has. I, well, if I don't Nar, know what to think about this, Dylan. <laughs> I mean, if Nar and uh, you know Alistar can knock them back, that does give Faker a chance to really do a ton of damage. So yeah, we'll see. It could go either way. If anyone's going to make this Zareth work, if it's not GBM, it's going to be Faker. Well, heavy poke composition for yep. God Zareth. They will have a... Pretty nice two to three item power spike. And again, CJ Entis, they didn't do anything to fix the kind of one wave clear problem that SK Telecom's composition had in the last game with just the Sivir with the static ship and everyone else being melee wa range wave clear. Although they won't be so much of a split pushing threat with the Gnar instead of the Shivana. But still, I think SK Telecom, I don't know why CJ Entis would, after just beating this composition, <laughs> would then pick it immediately. It's the moral victory, man. I mean, if you if you can win with the other team's comp from game one, you really strike a killing blow to their mentality. Here we go, guys. SKT trying to tie it up. Can they do it? Time to get in the game. It's time, SK Telecom versus CJ Antis. I'm also having horrible flashbacks of earlier this season when SKT would blind pick the Zareth I know, we with Faker, and it, it just never really worked. Yeah. Also, Easy Hoon's the better Zareth player on this team. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would be kind of poetic, wouldn't it, in that uh, the problems that SKT you know, had that plagued them for the, the better part of the first half of the season came back to end it for them in the very end, it'd be a bit of a tragic tale, but it makes sort of a sad amount of sense, wouldn't it? Zareth has been so impotent since Cinder Hulk was released. Yeah. He's been tried a lot by teams like Jyn Air, um, and it just hasn't been able to win games. Even when GBM was 5-0-2 and two on Zareth, by the time the mid-game rolled around, he wasn't able to do enough. And if you're looking for that consistent damage, I say go with the Cog, go with the go with the Ziggs. Don't go with the go, don't go with the Zareth. I like I like Ziggs way more. Now it's also true that Faker was never a great Ziggs player. Uh, he actually has a losing record on that champion professionally, hmm. which is really mind blowing to think about. <laughs> yeah, there aren't that many champions that Faker has a losing record on professionally. That is one of them. Yeah. 
Well, Faker will need to be at his most fakerist, fakeriest, fake fakiest. He's going to need to be Faker. Don't do that. Maybe they can work. So, Space and Mad Life. The other thing, too, is that we've seen SK Telecom come back from being two games down many times in high pressure situations, too. So, even if that happens, Historically, as an SKT fan, you shouldn't really be terribly worried about that. Problem with that is that the only player who did that was Baker. Oh, Pengu was part of it too, if they put him back in. It's true. Two out of five, I guess. <laughs> Arn watched a lot of those games. So no uh, no jungle start here. They gave the, gave the uh, Gromp over to Ambition. They're, they're shy, 40% win rate on Hecarim. Now, that's deceptive because actually yeah, he's, he's been very good on Hecarim. It's just his team wasn't very good when he was playing with Hecarim. Lately, a bit of a it's been much better. Yes. Yeah. Like if we look at the win rate from the last few weeks, I think it's going to be a very different story. Now, CJ, I think, is going to have a real hard time getting in to the enemy with this Vlad, though. Uh, you have that position reverser like we saw. If Thang can match what Space was doing with that ult, against Hecarim and uh, against the Vladimir like we saw in the last game, as well as Wolf being able to punt this Vladimir right out of team fights, punt the, the, the Hecarim out as well. Right. I think they have the tools necessary to replicate a similar team, team fight performance to what we saw from CJ in the last match. I don't know. I don't know about this. Hmm. Well, time will tell. Ambition going for a red steal early. Yeah, already moving into the uh, enemy jungle and taking some camps, so. Tom, I think this is smart by CJ. Just continue to pressure this guy's early jungle pathing. Yeah, Tom actually stole red on the other side too. So uh, both junglers using their lane pressure advantage to the fullest. And of course, the Faker will be able to bully out this this Vlad earlier. That is a very good reason for picking up the Zerath. It's very safe to bully the Vlad. Bank has been low. There's a flash low. Bank flashes as well. Stun onto Wolf. Actually, Madlife going back in. Nice pulverize from Wolf, though. TP. People getting low. Teleport coming down. Ambition in a lot of trouble. Summoner he'll use. And here comes Marin. Can he get the kill? No, not quite. Takes a lot of damage. Shy had teleported earlier to get back to lane. He wasn't able to go down, but he's going to get a little bit of time by himself in the top lane. And Marin flashed for that as well. Yeah, he did. Couldn't quite secure the kill, so CJ Ant is able to oh. delay enough to keep Ambition alive. Tom is just going to go ahead and solo the dragon, knowing that his jungling counterpart had the recall. Good timing right there. Great boomerang blade from space as well to delay Marin's recall even farther and just yeah. guarantee that dragon. He's going to lose about a, a wave of XP right there. Space really can't oh, do much oh. about this. Oh, well, he's going to try. Tom taking some damage. Wolf coming in as well. Space could be getting himself a bit trapped here. Oh, actually, yep. Tom gets the dragon. Space backing away. And Mad Life. This is getting really dicey. It's Tom actually has to crazy. flash over the wall. Space is trapped, though. Wow, if Space gets double buffs, that would have been huge. But here comes Faker first. Blood, meanwhile, goes to Ambition. Faker going after Space. He's no got to back off, though. He has no mana. No. Nope. And he missed his E. So uh, Tom got really low in the uh, course of all of that as well, too. Meanwhile, Ambition killed Wolf. Looks like Tom may not have had his consume off cooldown because he waited a really yeah. long time to use the smite. Uh, well. And they did force space over the wall, but couldn't actually complete the kill. We didn't get to see where Wolf went down, really. Well, in the end, SKT does get that first dragon. CJ gets first blood. Another little attempt on the bank there. But he'll be safe for right, now. Let's take a look at what happened to Wolf up here. Ambition comes. Oh. Okay, pretty simple. He was. Uh, everyone else was on the opposite side of the dragon pit by that point, trying to chase down space. Yeah, just poorly positioned he was, there. Well, he was there because he was trying to prevent Tom from using his flash to get out of the pit. He was trying to zone so that Tom could walk out. Unfortunately, that turned out to be a pretty poor decision uh, because Tom should have just committed to flashing earlier and just gone ahead and used that ability over the wall, and uh, that way Wolf could have been down more close to Tribrush. Yeah, they, those, got, they got a little bit greedy about that summoner, I think. Getting those assists onto uh, Coco and Space is certainly nice early on for CJ. Although a nice little CS lead for Bang out of all that. Well, that said, CJ still up in gold. By about 500 early on, which is so pretty just, nice. a, just the first blood gold, really. Yeah, it's about it. No, not a little really bit in the top lane, but not a lot otherwise. Hmm. 
So, action pack start. But things should be calming down a, a little bit more now. Marin with the long sword. It's like we may see a little bit more of an offensive build here. Do you think it'd be just like Hex Drinker into something uh, a bit more tanky then? Could be Brutalizer? No. Oh yeah, I suppose against Hecarim you wouldn't really need the Hex Drinker. I don't know. We'll see what he what he decides to do. Could be Hex Drinker, but could be just a Brutalizer into tank build as well. We've seen that popular among NAR players previously. Sure enough. And we've seen the, the uh, Frozen Mallet, too, a couple times recently as well, haven't we? Yeah, a lot in China, too. They yeah. really like that Frozen Mallet start. I'm not so wild about it because I, I think that, yes, it's great for lane bullying, but it doesn't give you very many options in terms of team fighting until you get two, you know, basically like three core items, actually. Hmm. So I think it's not worth it because you give up too much team fight presence early on in the game. We'll see what Martin does, decides to go with. He is, Martin is kind of the uh, preeminent NAR player he in has, Korea right now. He does do Frozen Mallet first. It's not that like he hasn't done that on NAR either. He could. I don't, I'm not a fan of it because like I said, I feel like it limits you strategically, but it can be used well as long as you can continue to push turrets, continue to punish your opponent in split push. Well, I think after last game, SKT, you know, it might not be so surprising if they prioritize pushing lanes and pushing turrets, just kind of keep what happened. Yep. Keep from uh, what happened yeah. last game to happen again. Yeah, well, in this game, too, since CJ picked basically the exact same composition, right. except for swapping the Nautilus for the Janna, uh, you could theoretically just do what, what CJ did yeah. and push, push, push these lanes early on and never let up. And the Frozen frozen Mallet would allow you to do that. So perhaps in this particular circumstance, when you only have the Sivir there as the ranged wave clear, that may, be, in fact, be a very good idea. That makes uh, sense. You just have to know if you're going for the Frozen Mallet first on the Gnar, what exactly you want to accomplish with it. Well, I mean, with the long sword first, we're not we're, we're not going to see probably the Frozen Mallet first. But this is right. it's interesting to talk about. Yeah, well, I mean, we've seen NAR built uh, a surprisingly large different uh, number of different ways, actually, this season. All right, oh, Marin. Ambition coming in. Marin could be in a little bit of trouble here. Has his flash, though. Nice explosive cast from Ambition. Marin in a lot of trouble. Doesn't get a chance to go Mega NAR before Shy takes him out. Yeah, uh, actually, I think not to hop out at that moment. And then immediately, so. Ambition starting to harass the blue buff, just being as annoying as possible. Knowing that he has that top lane advantage. It's oh, he got it. Up. He, he smote it away. away. Yes, yeah. he did. He managed to nail it. They tried to get it, but Zareth without that blue buff, awfully nice. So Ambition coming up with two big plays right in a row. How did Ambition get this good as a jungler? It really is insane, the amount of progress he's made in the second half of the season. I mean, he's, he's a smart player. That's something yeah. we've always known about him ever since he was a mid laner. And I, uh, being a veteran for this long, you have a good sense of where you could be on the map in the game, and it took him a little bit to adjust to the jungle, but now he really is able to play a very conservative style in terms of making these very low-risk plays and knowing where he has to be on the map, but he can still push an advantage. So, nicely done there. Picks yeah. up a kill for his top laner, and then follows through with a blue buff deny on Azerath. Very important. Yeah. All right, Mars actually just going for Warden's Mail now. He's yeah. not, definitely not going to commit. I think he's going to build full into Randuin's, or he's going to switch it up after this? I don't know. Dragon up in three. And Tom just lurking the brush, but there's a ward right there. Flash in, knocked it away. Tom in a lot of trouble. The Hemoplite goes down. Another kill for CJ. They are wrecking SKT so hard this game already. Tom, wow. can't, Tom can't be there. They don't have TP. Marin no. just TP'd into the top side. There was a ward in that brush and just waiting there. CJ Entis, I mean, that's that's uh, that's it. Best a 4v5 yeah. for SK Telecom. I think it's time to put Benki in again. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, not really not doing a whole lot for his teammates this series. Getting caught out a couple we'll of times here. Yeah, well, CJ picking up that. Second dragon of the game, there first to tie it up. Ahead in gold a little bit because of those early kills. And uh, CJ actually 
going to have uh, continuously a, a little bit more of a teleport advantage for a while, too. Yeah. Oh, in on to Wolf. Wolf with the immediate pulverize, though. And yeah, with banging that shield, you're just not going to be able to 2v2 this, I think, right now. Tom going after Snow Crab. Yep. Use Smite, make sure Ambition can't get that one up. Marin continues to want to play aggressively. Looks like he will be going for the Giant's Belt next. All right. Well, meanwhile, some action down the bot lane. Wolf taking about half his health in damage. Oh, Tom comes in. <laughs> These guys. Smite for spite. It has been really fun to watch Tom and Ambition in terms of counter jungling each other in this yeah. series. That's been something that Tom actually has been pretty on top of. But I mean, as Ambition soon as really, really matching him in that on that front, though. As soon as Tom kind of tightens up his play, he is going to be, I think, one of the better junglers in Korea. I don't feel, I don't feel nervous making a statement like that right now. <laughs> I feel like this guy's got a, a pretty bright future. Yeah, you can really see the difference, though, in, t in terms of veteran status between oh, yeah. Ambition and Tom. Though. Yeah, Tom's got a ways to go, for sure. Good start, but a ways to go. Omari so getting a little bit of farm in the top lane. Blood Boil Faker. Now, that's the thing that SKT's composition lacks, is that real Blood Boil synergy this game. It's yeah. They don't have that Azir this time around just to really to, make the most of it. Need to build Trinity Force on Alistar and then just Blood Boil him. <laughs> Yeah. I miss Trinity Force Al top lane Alistair so much, <laughs> though. Maybe someday it will be a thing again. Uh, Marin at least doing work on Shy's tower, if nothing else. And they've mostly waited out the TP advantage that Shy had as well. So yeah. SKT may have a bit of an easier time moving forward in this game. Coco starting to move up in terms of that wave clear, though, getting close to that Will of the Ancients. And this Zareth pick hasn't really opened up much. I mean, now we see Coco with a CS lead over Faker as well, even though Coco was getting poked out early on. Yep. Not true enough, gets that Abyssal Scepter, which is more or less biased straight up, and that's actually a pretty pretty nice pickup against SKT this early. Yes, it will be. Not a lot of damage from SKT's composition. You know, they don't have that Shivana. They've got the Gnar this game instead, mostly only useful for CC. And Zareth. Low well, on to Tom. Mad Life lands that hook. Ambition, though, getting stunned by Faker. There's the depth charge used. Faker knocked up, but no response from CJ. Coco down to do a little bit more damage to Tom, but Faker will make it out. Mad Life has been uh, pretty liberal about using that ult, but it is a pretty cool, uh, quick cooldown on that one. Yeah, I mean, it might as well if you can make the pick with that, especially on a of course. champion like Zareth. And one of the reasons why Zareth just hasn't been working out for a lot of players is in the tank meta, he just simply can't do enough damage. He's very vulnerable to Hecarim. And uh, due to his total immobility, effectively. And his he just can't burst people down in the way he used to be able to before all of these tanks came into the game. And Coco, especially, yeah. is going to be able to do way more persistent damage if he can close the gap into the enemy team on this Vladimir. Now, of course, that was obviously oh. easy Hoon's problem in the last match. And it's very smart for CJ to be on this blue buff again. So you know, Faker of... is a little bit desperate for that at this point in time. And instead, they back off, but they deny some CS from Faker in the mid lane. He and get some damage down onto the tower, even though Faker does secure the blue in the end. They had to w use a lot of resources in order to get that, including having Bang sit alone in the bottom side. Yeah. SKT's comp is like the Death Star right now, you know? It's like really strong, but it has a very obvious exploitable <laughs> flaw, you know? Zareth is the exhaust port on this Death Star. <laughs> the Zareth. exhaust port didn't do any damage though, Doa. That's the no. thing. No. Well, but we, Faker may also not be doing much damage this game. We'll see. But if you, oh, Coco actually is starting to do some, da or uh, take some damage rather. Is Faker going to ult? Nope. Not quite. Meanwhile, a turret goes down in CJ's favor, but we'll see what happens. It's pretty big, actually. The big if difference, obviously, is CJ has those kills. They have the first turret of the game, and they have that gold advantage. So while things were pretty even last time around, SK Telecom. Uh, even though CJ picked that same comp with a gold lead, they should be able to overcome some of the tankiness or at least push a bit harder in the mid game here. Especially Infinity Edge done right now. True. And dragging up in 45 at this point. And I don't know, I'd, I'd love to see SKT try to fight this one. No, I think, I, uh, I I think you just give it up, honestly. 
I'd love to see him try because I just don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. Tom um, eating wards. Delicious. Tower down finally for Marin. Shy's going to get there, but yeah. not the greatest time for the Nar ultimate, too, so. No, certainly not. Uh -oh. Shy also chunking oh him out. Oh boy. Yep. Marin has to hop away. Here we go. Scuttle crab to CJ. And they don't have good vision around the backside of the pit right now. Make him a little bit more reluctant to start this immediately. And Faker and Bang have to poke CJ off. They're going to do work. Magi Soul Stealer on a Faker. Okay, we're all in, buddy. Nice, nice. I like it. That's so I like, dangerous. I like the confidence, you know? Against a Gragas <laughs> who can knock you in, and then you get the yeah. follow up. Oh, oh double knock up ambition coming back in for a stun. There's the explosive cast use. Here comes a teleport from CJ. They grab Wolf yet again. Tom trying to just disrupt things, but he's going to get killed. Oh, boy, there's another kill for ambition. And SKT already pushed back. Faker doing some damage, but not a ton. No TP from Marin. Not really, no. Marin's still way up there. And SKT, they have to let this one go, right? Marin is. He's okay. Up. They're going to try. Go. They're going to yep. try a 4v5. Dragging a bit low. Well, CJ's going to grab the dragon. They're going to go on to bang right away. There's a knockup. Bang a little bit low. Wolf picked up, pushed back in. He's going to take it out. Marin with a huge NAR ultimate. Can they do anything about this? Oh, no. A double kill for Coco. And there goes Faker. Faker manages to get the kill on Ambition. And meanwhile, Marin gets into the back lines trying to get a kill on to Shy, but it's not going to work. Nice grab from Mad Life. And Shy picks up yet another one. And that was a four for one and a dragon in favor of CJ. And a triple kill for Coco Jeez. as well as he got into the back line. SKT. Uh, they didn't want to port while Marin didn't have the Gnar ult up. It looked like coming in there. Uh, and then, as soon as they did, of course, it was already a 4v5. Faker out of mana at this point as well, so limited amount as to what he can actually do in this fight. And look at Coco, gets the angle, great flash from space over the wall yeah. to target the very vulnerable Zareth. And all of his peel was gone at that point. Marin had already used his ult, so Marin gets taken down in the end. Oof, SKT, their TP usage has not been anywhere near as on point tonight as CJ Antis is. Certainly. Well, and again, I mean, we saw just about uh, how useful that Zareth is in a team fight. Yeah, he got a kill onto Ambition, but overall, he didn't do a whole lot. You know, I mean, he wasn't able to follow up on that big ultimate from he Baron. No, he had no mana. Yeah, and he had no backup, really, too. I mean, they chose to take that 5v4. They w it was just uh, simply a very bad decision. Yeah, I mean, all s the entire first half of the season, uh, they were very heavily uh, criticizing pick ban, and, and for good reason, and, and for reasons like we're seeing right here tonight. I'm a little bit surprised to see it come back in such a crucial match when it's been gone for so long, but I'm trying it's to hurting set something just up the same here. Now. is going to be quite small in just a moment. It's a 2v3, though. Even with Wolf there, yeah, he's zoned out. I don't know. I don't think that this is going to turn into anything for SKT. That's a pretty large lead now for CJ, and that's yes, what they is. need. Well, CJ's winning this one harder than they were winning game number one at this point. And I think that having the Zareth instead of the Azir against this comp just gives them not as good of a disengage option. Yeah. The way we're seeing this unfold. But I, honestly, most of it is just SK Telecom. <laughs> Not fighting 4v5. <laughs> That's what caused oh, that big shy. loss. On to Marin. There's the ult. Marin feared. There's the emo plague as well, too. This should be a pretty easy kill once that goes off. Meganar pops up, though. There's a stun on to Shy. I still don't think Marin's escaping, even with that ult. Nope. Shy claims another one. And CJ continues to push down this mid lane at the same time. Well, you can see CJ just going from lane to lane to lane yeah. right now, trying to see what advantage they can take. Faker out of mana again. At least he has the blue buff this time, but it's a tier two over to CJ. And here's that great closing that we're well, seeing from CJ again. I mean. And it's CJ continues just to take man advantage fights yeah. over and over and over again this game. And that's why they're able to succeed with this composition where SK Telecom failed. Well, Shy recalling in the uh, Krug bit. 
Oh, Ambition actually grabbed that buff too. Yes, he did. Wow. Tom has really not been able to uh, yep, tower down as well. Tower. Wow. They committed to it's... trying to fight right there with the red buff and got punished for by a tower. SK Telecom just not playing objectives very well tonight, surprisingly. Yeah, I know. This is. Well, it's disappointing. This is such a different SK Telecom than we've seen. This, I mean, SKT came into this undefeated, right, in the second half of the season. So where is that team, and who are these guys now? And I think a lot of it, you know, is in picks and bans. The old problems have apparently decided to show up again here in game number two. I don't think we've seen a single Zareth win since Cinderholt was released. I don't think we're going to see a Zareth win uh, unless it's a bit of a fluke. Uh, yeah, not, not with this level of deficit in the game either. Yeah. It's really looking like SKT is going to find themselves in that uh, classic 0-2 position in a best of five. And we have seen them come back and win those in the past, but they're really going to need to make some changes. You have to think back, though, that uh, you know, to the finals from 2013 in summer, and although that was a different team, it was a situation where SKT just looked like they were beaten. There was nothing they could do against their opponent's strategy, and they still found a way to come back then. Yeah, they mixed it up pretty substantially in that third game, the picks and bands of that series that you're referencing. And yep. you know, it is relevant because we're dealing with the same coach. So yeah, true. I suppose. Let's see how many tricks Coma has up his sleeve. Hi, this this Zareth though. Yeah, not working out too well. Coco just really wants to delay that recall, but Wolf has got Faker's back. No worries. Coco, though. Wow. He's body blocking He's the up. ward. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. Why not, man? Why not? He's got that sustained, and of course, Dudu not going to do much damage with autos, so. Hey, another turret up in the top lane. Yeah, Shy is just continuing to be most dominant top laner in Korea right now. I think you ban, it's questionable too, their bans. You look at yeah. the, the Shivana ban, you're like, Azir well. ban. Oh, oh, here we go, action down there. Huge pulverize, CJ trying to follow it up. They've got such a lead though. Wolf, very, very low, Faker firing from the outside, but already chunked down. They managed to push CJ back. Shine not using his teleport there. Neither side deciding to move down, and with Dragon coming up in five, looks like CJ's gonna secure another one. All they needed to do was just push SKT back, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, CJ has been using this comp so much better from SK Telecom, just yeah. skirmishing with it, using that disruption to skirmish with Sivir instead of committing to the big 5v5s where they could get zoned out, where they can get punished by a lot of crowd control from Alistair and from Nunu. Yep. More fighting here, but you're not going to find much of anything. And SKT, this is the first time we've actually seen them group this game with Zareth and Urgot to try and poke people off the tower. Yeah, they might be able to get their uh, second turret of the game here. Tom taking a lot of damage. Nice all from Ambition. Tom has to flash away. Oh boy, Coco nearly getting blown up there. He might when he comes out. Tom's still low. Shy coming down Shy with the knows. teleport of the top. Yep, and Space gets the first kill out of that fight. Here we go. Here comes Shy over the top. On to Faker, on to Bang. They're going to try to take out Marin as well, too. Shy having to back off. Whoa, Mad Life coming in with that Q. He's going to take a lot of damage. Marin suddenly Meganar here, too, trying to block the disengage. Tom comes out. Coco coming in from behind, and Faker might be in a little bit of trouble. Marin's going to go down in the back lines. And look at this. Coco in space all over Faker. It is over over there. In the meanwhile, Marin trying to just fight off Shy. Jeez, CJ backing off now, but what a lead they've got. 10K, another Manic turret yeah. going down. Just look at the minion wave pressure that we're seeing from CJ and just every time they engage a fight, they immediately have already pushed that minion wave up, so they take a tier two off mid in both of the side lanes. Very well played by CJ Entis, and Vaker really struggling. That Medjai is getting worth less and less in terms of gold values. We check this yep. one out. They can't kill Coco. It was a nice try. W straight into Zonia's. Uh, they really committed a lot of resources to that, and instead they just get totally baited out. Wolf goes down instantly in that fight, and then they just try and get the hell out of there, Shy. Doing a little disruption, holding off Marin, blowing yet another flash. And Faker just not really doing any damage right here. As Coco. Well, Marin trying to just save Faker and keep everyone occupied, but Coco and Space yeah, are not heal. fooled. Yep. The heal comes in for that extra speed boost. Faker yep. has no more tools, and it's going oh. to be a Baron attempt. 
spare in time for CJ. Why not? You're 9k gold up. Yeah, seriously. SK Telecom. Easy, Baron. Trying to threaten, but Coco's zoning really well. Here comes Wolf. Can he do anything? Siveralt pop. They're going to go in. Shy. Zareth trying to make something happen, but no. Ambition manages to take it. Faker not able to really chunk anyone down effectively with the Zareth ultimate. And now, Empowered Recall. And CJ in a prime position to take game two in style. 12,000 gold ahead now. Coco doing great this game. Yeah, you know, no we, kidding. We've seen his Vlad before, and he has been, I think, the best Vlad player we've seen in Korea. Knows the limits of the champions really well. And you know, Vlad, Coco plays Vlad a little bit differently than a lot of the Vlad players do as well. He really likes to tower dive. We've seen him tower dive people 1v1 and get kills. Oh, he's he's pretty darn aggressive with this champion. Whereas a lot of players want to, like we saw Easy Who in that last game, want to try and get in for the big AoE damage in 5v5s. How has Coco been playing it? Nope, this game it's been split pushing and tower diving in conjunction with space the entire time. And look at this, it's gonna get CJ another turret in the mid lane, maybe even the, the top lane as well too. Putting that parent off to work. And we have not seen such a total demolition of SK Telecom for the entire second half of the season. This is pretty impressive from CJ. They, they really came in tonight. And where do you go yeah, from your they SKT? They, they show that they can use this comp that SKT failed to wield properly. Yeah, they need a new plan. And they're going to go in onto Marin. Marin going Meganar, but going to get taken out very quickly anyway. There's going to be an inhibitor exhaust onto Coco as he goes farther back into the SK Telecom base. And the first inhibitor of the game will fall in top lane. Meanwhile, mid lane turret taken out. What does SKT do? There's the Sivir ultimate pop. Space and the rest of CJ, they want to fight this one. Tom backing away. Bang and Wolf trying to do something, but there goes another inhibitor. They grab Bang. Here comes Shy over the top. A little bit of a fear. They catch Tom. Tom goes down. And CJ is ready to close this one out. Man. It's not going to be long now. <laughs> no, it won't be. That's for sure. And uh, CJ, this will be their 11th consecutive win. We're actually getting into the territory of CJ Blaze from Champion Spring back in 2013, where they had that big 13-game win streak going into the finals. Yeah. Um, they did lose those finals, but it was very surprising that they did. They did, indeed. And that was Blaze as well, too. Okay, here we go. The final fight. Wolf getting a nice knock up here. Marin trying to make something happen. He is going to be Meganar soon. SKT up. This might be an opportunity here. Marin so low already, though. There goes inhibitor number three. And Marin's going to get taken out. Goodbye, Space. Whoa, Space not getting the kill quite yet. Methodical, though, take down every last inhibitor. Yep. Then you can make your final push into the base. Look how much money they have. Holy cow. Yeah. Wow, well, what do you say? I mean, CJ has just been so good lately. But and the thing is, is that they're so much better every match we've seen them. Yeah. They just, every time they face a stronger opponent, they've increased in power that much, you know? Yeah, I feel like something's going on with the comms of SK Telecom, though, in this series, because it just, Marin has not been very well coordinated with the rest of the team. Well, you wonder how much of a role Benki plays in that, and the lack of him uh, might be hurting here. Space comes in with that Silver Ultimate. Nice grab on the Wolf from Mad Life. That's going to be an easy kill. And CJ, they're looking like they're ready to end this one. Big Nar Ultimate, but it only gets CJ closer to killing everybody. Position reversal used by Bang. There goes Tom. Bang trying to poke, but who are you going to kill? Oh, goodbye. Ambition takes him out. And so, if the SK Telecom base is the Death Star Trench, Luke Skywalker and the CJ Alliance is coming in to take it down. There goes the Nexus, and CJ is going to go up 2-0 in this best of five. GG. Very surprising results so far. CJ Antis high fives between Coach Sun and Shy in the booth. And look at that. High fives all around. CJ on the cusp of 3-0-ing their opponent in what would be a pretty substantial upset. Wow, that would be incredible. I mean, Coming into this, we knew that CJ had the potential to beat SK Telecom. They yeah. certainly were looking good in the meta, but we didn't expect them to play this well. This is a step above anything we've seen from them in years. Yeah, and Literally that's true, years. but also SK Telecom looking really discombobulated tonight. We've, yeah. we've seen a little bit of trouble in terms of TP uh, communication with Marin. 
Tom has been caught out several times and kind of showing his 